Hello everyone, my name is Min Nguyen. I'm the marketing manager for Space FPGAs. In this next session today, um, I will be talking about update for our RT FPGAs. So the agenda we have, um, first I'll go into the latest product that we have to serve the uh, payload processing applications, which is RTG4. The RTG4 product update will include update on um, the new package that we introduced, that's the ceramic quad flat pack 352 pins, to be followed by update on our qualifications and also on our software and IP. Those are the ecosystem that's supporting RTG4. Then I'd like to continue to give you update on um, the heritage that the other RTFPGAs have achieved in the recent years. And to conclude with update on export status for our RTFPGAs. So first to go into the update for RTG4. As you may have heard about RTG4 already, that stands for Radiation Tolerant uh, Fourth Generation of Flash Technologies from MicroSemi. RTG4 is the high-speed um, signal processing radiation tolerant FPGAs. From this chart on the slide, if you look at um, the way we compare the logic density and also the performance of RTG4 with respect to previous family such as RTAX, RT Prozic 3, and RTSX SU, you can see a big improvement in terms of um, logic density. RTG4 is about seven times larger than the largest RTAX device and also about three times faster than RTAX at 300 megahertz. So with that together, um, RTG4 really gives you about 20 times improvement in terms of signal processing throughput. And this is essential, this is critical for payload and signal processing applications out there. Looking at some of the other features that RTG4 offer um, as highlight for the family. So again, this is a 65 nanometer flash technology from UMC. UMC is the foundry that we use for all of our space FPGAs. The RTG4 can reach um, 300 megahertz, 150,000 logic elements, and has 24 SERDIS transceiver that can run up to 3.125 gigabit per second. And with radiation performance um, as good or even better than previous family, that good for geosynchronous, deep space, and all orbits. So we'd like to introduce to you the latest package um, in this family to support the RT4G150 device that have 150,000 logic elements. We um, recently introduced a ceramic quad flat pack uh, with 352 pins. On this chart, you can see on the left-hand side is the set of features for the existing Columbia Array package with 657 pins. And on the right hand side is the comparison of the new package, um, the CQ352. In terms of logic elements, uh, number of math blocks, SRAM blocks, um, they are similar between the two package type. There is a um, reduced number of user I.O. So the ceramic quad flat pack is really um, good for applications where you don't require that many IOs. So the CQ352 offer up to 166 multi-purpose um, general purpose IOs. And um, the advantage of the CQ package is this is a well-known package in the space industry. So it has very well-known assembly technique and um, also um, have shorter lead time um, to help you out without the lead time on the column attached as you would normally have on the ceramic column grid array package. Some of the features I'd like to highlight um, on here is we're still keeping about four space wide clock and data recovery on the CQ package. Um, we have one block of studies being bonded out that's supporting four studies lanes, um, supporting the native studies and also PCIe. Currently, we're looking at the availability for the CQ package um, for the RT4G150 device with the first samples coming in summer this year to be specific in July timeframe and with flight units to follow in July of next year. 
to give you some more information on the CQ352 package, the package size and weight, um, as you know, the CQ352 is probably the largest, one of the largest uh, package dimensions out there. So that's 48 by 48 millimeter. In comparison with the existing package, the CG657, the physical dimension is at 42.5 uh, by 42.5 millimeter. The pin assignment table and also the pinouts have been available on MicroSemi website. We also have um, software that available for you to start designing with this package since um, Libro SOC version 11.7, Service Pack 3, and later version. Next, I'd like to go into update for qualification for RTG4. As of October last year, we have completed the MUT standard 883 Class B qualification successfully. The details of that qualification and the requirements include 1,000 hours of high temperature um, life tests to be done on a minimum of three wafer lots. So for this qualification, um, we had three wafer lots with 54 units, and all 54 units were functional during and after that 1,000 hour life test at high junction temperature of 125C. That satisfy the requirement for the Group C as part of the MOOC standard 883 Class B qualification requirements. We did not stop there. We actually took these units um, through additional live tests. So at this time, all 54 units have gone through 4,000 hour live tests and at high junction temperature of also beyond 125 degrees C. And those live tests were completed successfully. All these devices were functioned during and after the 4,000 hour live test. This is a very exciting result for us. And um, it really helped to prove the reliability of our flash technologies generations after generations. The extensive reliability data was collected on the overall 65 nanometer uh, flash process from UMC. Beside RTG4, we also have the um, commercial equivalent of RTG4, which is the Smart Fusion 2 and Iglu 2 family that also based on 65 nanometer. And overall, the um, product fit rate for the 65 nanometer has been calculated to be less than 3.11 fit as of today. For more information, we have an updated reliability report that includes fit rate and reliability data for all RTFPGA family on um, the ORT report, which link I show on the slide here. As for ESD classification, um, RTG4 is classified at ESD 1A based, uh, based on the HBM model. All the pins um, pass 2,000 volt except for the so these supply pins, the VDDA IOs, those pass 250 volt. That's why the family were put at an ESD of class 1A. For product retention, the overall retention for the flash technology for RTG4 is at 20 years for a junction temperature of 115C or 10 years at a junction temperature of 125C. On this chart, you are seeing the detailed high temperature retention for the family based on different junction temperature. So you can see anything beyond 115 junction will give you a high temperature retention um, of 20 years. And as you get to 125C, as I mentioned, then you would get uh, 10 years for the high temperature retention data. So this is also a very good data for the family and we're showing it for the first time. This data will be available in our documentation shortly. To summarize the reliability data on RTG4, um, given this is the latest family that we have in our uh, Space of PGA product portfolio, these are the data that we have collected and we have all intention to collect more data over time. For the high temperature operating life, so these are the live test data that we have done. And you've seen some of those data from the qualification that we did for the 883 Class B. 
up until today, um, we got a total of 132,000 test hours at junction temperature of 125C, and zero failures have been observed so far. For the high temperature data retention, which is something we always do for flash technology, we also have a very high number of um, test hours. So these are the units that have gone through very stressful conditions um, in the programming test cycle to prove the reliability um, for high temperature data retention. To be specific, these data from um, these units from six different wafer lots have gone through more than 470 programming test cycles, exceeding the number of test cycles that we specify in our data sheet, which is at 200 cycles. To, be, um, to put devices through very stressful condition and to prove reliability and also uh, the data retention for the technology. So after these devices have gone through um, that high number of programming test cycles, we put them through 1,000 hour live tests. And after all the stressful testing, um, we saw zero failure observed so far. So this is very good data um, that we're very excited to report back. And all this data are presented in details, wafer lot by wafer lot, in the same OIT report. Um, that's the reliability report, reversion 14, that we published a couple of weeks ago. Note that the latest 4,000 hour live test um, is not included in this revision 14 yet. They're going to be included in the next revision of the reliability report. It is our intention to get to the highest QML qualification for our TG4 family. So far, our progress on QML qualification has been to prepare the technology insertion plant and go through that plant with the three certifying authorities. They are um, Aerospace Corporation, JPL, and DOA. The technology insertion plan has been approved for both QMLQ and QMLV from the three certifying authorities. We've also completed audits at different um, vendors that we use to manufacture RTG4, uh, manufacture and test RTG4 devices. So audits have been done at the foundry, um, um, at the bump house, at the assembly house, and also at the column attached vendor. The standard microcircuit drawing, or the SMD draft, um, has been submitted to DOA for QML class Q. Therefore, we are still expecting QML class Q to be completed in the middle of next year. So in a month or two, we're expecting to finalize the review of the SMD for QML class Q with DOA. And then um, we can say that a TG4 has gone through QML Q qualification. To prepare for QML Class V qualification, which we are currently targeting to be completed in early of 2018, we plan to take one wafer lot with 45 units that have been assembled to the QML Class V, which is the uh, MIL PRF3535 standard, um, to be our qualification lot. And this lot will have to go through 4,000 hours of live tests at high junction temperature. This live test is expected to be completed by the end of this year, um, calendar year 2017. Once that milestone is achieved, we will submit that qualification data to DOA and apply for QML Class V. Prior to achieving QML Class V qualification, MicroSemi offer the EV devices. So EV is our devices that are screened and tested to the QMLV flow prior to us obtaining the official QMLV qualification. The EV devices um, are available subject to lead time and we have been shipping EV units for RTG4 since last year. We launched RTG4 products in April of 2015. So it's been about two years now that RTG4 has been in the market. And we're very excited to 
see the progress that RTG4 has made in our customer base. So these are the program that have baselining RTG4. So by baselining, we meant to say these are the program that have intention to fly with RTG4. They have either received our flight units or close to receiving flight units and have all intention to fly with RTG4. Some may actually happen very soon, sometime in next year in 2018. Some of these programs that you see in here are coming from NASA. So TESS is the first program that would probably be flying with RTG4. The launch date for TESS is currently lining up for middle of 2018, and we are excited to work, be working with our customers on TESS program, hopefully to see this as one of the first flight heritage for the family. Some of the significant program that NASA, that I'm sure some of you recognize on here, is the Orion. On the Orion, RTG-4 would be at the heart of a system, um, a critical system, that would make sure that the, um, the astronaut, um, the crew, would be in a safe position if any case happened to the launch or during the launch. In some of the programs that you see in here also from NASA, including WFIRST, and a collaboration that NASA participated in also with European Space Agency and DOR in Germany, that's the IDA program. If you look at SLIM from JAXA, so this is from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. This is a lunar lander that looking at RTG-4 to be in one of the important systems um, on this lander. Beside the program that you see from government agency of NASA, of uh, JAXA, and um, ESA on here, we also have RTG4 on, for example, that single ball computer on the top right-hand side. So this single ball computer, half RTG4, is in the heart of the system. It's basically the main computer on the board to help do signal processing and also data processing for this single ball computer. There are other commercial programs that also looking at to be using RTG4. There are a digital generalizer and also a reconfigurable processor platform that looking at RTG4 based on the attractiveness of the signal processing capability and also the radiation performance that's very hardened for the environments that these commercial satellites are going into. So overall, we see these as the key programs that we like to highlight to you, our customers, so you can see the progress that ITG4 has made. I'm sure that you have more programs lining up, and we're excited to be working with you in the future to be supporting all these programs with ITG4. To summarize on the availability and the qualification schedule of the RTG4 family, I'd like to point out that we've been having um, the RTG4 prototyping device been available since day one. So these prototyping device have the same die and package as the flight units. They are screened to the full military temperature from negative 55C to 125C. The only thing they don't go through is the screening and testing as flight units would go through. And therefore, they are available sooner, um, allow you, user to do <coughs> prototyping on these devices much early on prior to obtaining flight units. We also have the RTG4 development kits that um, you see um, a, a picture on the screen right here with the RTG4 sitting in the center of this development kits. This is a very comprehensive development kit with onboard memory, with connectors available, um, and also DDR memories available on the board. This is a comprehensive platform allowing users to start evaluating with the RTG4 family without having to build your own test board. On the development kits are the prototyping device, the RTG4 available in a variety of packages. They are available in the ceramic conical array 1657, also in the ceramic ball grid array 1657. The starter ball version 
um, it's available only for prototyping units and only on the development boards to give customers different options when it comes to prototyping with this development board. We also have daisy chain packages that have been available since day one. These daisy chain packages um, have a dummy die inside, but just having the packages itself and all the pins connected, it really helps user to evaluate the board assembly techniques and also um, test out the, the PCB design um, at the very early stage of the design process. For qualification, to summarize, our MILT standard AA3 Class B qualification has been completed since last year. We have been shipping flight units including B-Flow, E-Flow, and also our EV-Flow, as I mentioned, is the equivalent of the full QML Class V prior to obtaining the official QML Class V. These flight units have been available um, subject to lead time. For QML Q, we're looking at middle of this year, so in a couple of months. And for QML V qualification, we're targeting completed at end early of next year. To give you a summary of the radiation performance, since I've talked about since the beginning that RTG4 has enhancement in terms of performance of logic elements while maintaining the radiation performance that you have been familiar with from our previous RTFPGA devices. This table is showing just a summary and the highlight of some of the critical radiation parameters for um, our RTFPGAs. I will not go too much um, into details since we have a very detailed radiation presentation to follow um, right after this presentation. So just for the highlight, what we're looking at for the RTG4 family is a total ionizing dose that stay within data sheet parameters beyond 125 KRAT. Meaning, when we've seen in our testing and data, up to 125 KRAT, we saw no degradation in uh, performance for this technology, given the new push-pull structure that we have for RTG4, and that will be shown in much more details in the next presentation. The other factor when it comes to radiation is the single event effect. So for a single event effect, the two critical parameters for single event effect is single event latch up and um, configuration memory upset. So these are the two parameters that we make sure we did the testing very early on, um, the first testing we did for single event effect. For both, we saw no latch up or no configuration memory upset um, up to a very high linear energy level at 103 MeV centimeter square per milligram at high temperature of 100 degrees C. This is very much in line with what we expect for this technology and also something that we've had for generations of flash FPGAs by now. Some other single event um, upsets that we look into for the flip-flops and for the um, onboard SRAM that used to store data are also show on this summary. For the flip-flops, the flip-flops have triple module redundancy built in to the device. Um, these are radiation hardened by design techniques that are built into the RTG4, so users don't have to implement soft TMR for the flip-flops. The testing show that the flip-flop upset rate is at a very low rate of um, e to the minus 12 errors per bit day in geosolament. For the SRAM um, that we have available in two flavors, the large SRAM, also known as LSRAM or the micro SRAM, for both we have done testing with and without EDAC. For our SRAM embedded blocks, we have optional EDAC that are available. Um, this EDAC could be turned on um, or could be turned off, and those are built into the RTG4 device. In addition, we also have core EDACs available as an IP that have added capability to perform scrubbing when um, you decide to constantly write the right data into um, the SRAM cell. 
So in our testing, where we say the testing with EDAC, these data were collected based on uh, both the embedded EDAC and also the core EDAC IP. Without EDAC, we're looking at an error rate um, of about e to the 7 or e to the 8 errors per bit day in GeoSolament. When EDAC is turned on, we see an improvement um, in terms of reducing the error rate to e to the minus 11 or e to the minus um, 13 errors per bit day for the embedded LSRAM blocks. These are good data showing the effectiveness of EDAC, whether they are the built-in EDAC or they are the core EDAC IP that are available in our software. Altogether, the radiation performance of RTG4 on these critical parameters are solid. And more details on the other blocks, um, DDR, SIRDES, um, also our test plan to be followed in the next presentation. In the next section, um, I'd like to go over the ecosystem that include software, IP. These are IP from MicroSemi. These are our direct core and also the IP that have been supported by our partners. Some software highlights that i like to point out here. These are the variety of versions that we have released within the last several months. And I still like to go back to version 11.7 .7 SP2 that were released back in October 2016 because this is the first version where we had the production timing and power data. So by production timing and power data, these are the data that we have um, as we completed the silicon characterization of the RTG4 device family. So those are the final silicon data that were put into the software that really represent um, what the, the device are capable of. Prior to this release, the timing and power data available in the software at the time were a combination of some silicon data and some simulation data until 11.7 SP2. So even though this is a service pack software, that's why it's called SP2, this is a major release with respect to RTG4. Some of the key enhancements that we did in um, SP2 that I also want to highlight was um, we did change a couple of timing durating. For example, the durating for the total ionizing dose was improved um, reduced to 1% from 5% based on the TID data that we have collected by that time. And also with the timing data update going to from preliminary status to production, we were able to give the user back some of the uh, margin that we had to hold back in the beginning before we got silicon characterization um, data, which is the production timing and data. So there should be performance improvement that um, was seen in 11.7 SP2 compared to prior versions. Then in January of this year, we released the Service Pack 3, and this was the first version where we um, provided the support for the Ceramic Quad Flat Pack 352 pins in standard speed grade. This package is still in advanced timing data until we have the uh, full silicon characterized data, but at least it's available in the software today for um, any customer who wants to design with this new release package. The plan we have in 11.8 um, is another version that we released just in March. Um, we also added a new Simplify Pro version that really um, helping with some of the inference of the um, to not infer the feed through write mode. This is one of the features that no longer available. So this is another important release to keep in mind based on the availability of the Simplify Pro version. The plan we have for the next software release will be coming in around August timeframe of this year. And in this release, a key feature that will be included would be support for Direct C. So Direct C um, is a tool from MicroSemi that basically um, provides a set of C code. And the DAT file is the programming data file that Direct C would use to perform in-system programming for RTG4 using an external microprocessor. So this is something that we want to support 
in our effort to look into supporting RTG4 in-flight programming or in-orbit programming. In order to do that, very likely you would have an onboard processor where you would load your programming code in there and then use the processor to do the monitoring of the programming. And also make sure programming is done successfully for the RTG4 device and also um, monitoring the, pr the progress of programming as it goes through. So Direxi is the baseline tool that will be assisting with supporting the in-system programming um, to support in-flight programming eventually. The Direxi tool is available free of charge. You will see more details in follow-on demonstration that's showing how Direxi is used to perform programming between the two RTG4 development kits. And you will also see one of the examples of a uh, processor solution that we will be adopting to supporting RTG4 in-flight programming um, using the RISC-5 uh, processor going forward. Speaking of RISC-5, so RISC-5 is a free and open instruction set architecture, or also known as ISA. RISC-5 was developed um, a few years ago from University of California, Berkeley. Since then, this ISA processor has been gaining a lot of momentum, and you can see the sponsor group um, all the logo of companies that have been participating uh, very aggressively in supporting this RISC-V architecture. So one of the advantages of RISC-V that we see from MicroSemi is being a free and open instruction set architecture. It really gives us the ability to do full optimization to get the most optimized performance and power for our devices, for example, in the RTG4. That would be the first platform, one of the first platforms that we target to have RISC-V supported. We will have our own name for this RISC-V solutions when it's supported in micro semi FPGAs. It's a 32-bit instructions um, that have 32-bit, 64-bit, and 128-bit address spacing um, options. We're also looking into floating point support and um, having the complete ecosystem around RISC-V to support the RTG4 solution. Some of the update for RISC-V support on RTG4 um, is shown on this slide. In terms of the software tools, we plan to provide a complete software tools to support the RISC-V solution. The Linux and Windows development environment are currently available with a complete verification suite to um, allow you to run the RISC-V on uh, multiple operating systems. Currently, the RISC-V um, is available as a soft RISC-V IP. Um, this IP is free of charge for MicroSemi. And we had the preliminary IP that have been running on a Dash 1 speed grade um, RT4G150 device. So the Dash 1 speed grade refers to a higher speed for the device family, and that's usually about 15% faster than the standard speed grade. So in a Dash 1 RT4G150 device, RISC-V had been shown to be running around 70 MHz, optimized for RTG4 technology. We have a sample RISC-V project that have been targeted and validated on the RTG4 development kits, and that sample project is available on the GitHub website that we're showing the link on here. We also have um, different RISC-V um, documentations to assist you if you want to start doing evaluation and you have a RTG4 development kit. This is a good place to start to get a sample project. Later on, you will see many demos um, that will, um, as I mentioned earlier, there was a demo on two RTG4 development kits. Um, the programming is being done with RISC-V is being used as the microprocessor um, tool and in conjunction with Direxi.
Some other IP solutions that I want to point out here, this is in no means a complete list of IP that we have supported for the RTG4 family. That's a long list. On this list, we have both direct core for Micro Semi and also from our partner cores. So these are highlights since these are probably one of the IP cores that have been inquired the most from our customer base. The 1553 solution and core PCIF are currently available. The triple speed Ethernet and SGMII, these have recently become available since we start seeing interest to do Ethernet and um, those solutions for um, RTG4. So as a result, these IP are now available in our IP catalog that can be downloaded from the Libro SOC um, IP catalog. Also, to support and to interface the RTG4 device with high-speed ADC and data converter that are available in the market today, we have the JSD204B transmit and receiver IP that available directly from Micro Semi. This IP can be obtained and you can get more information from our IP website for the JSD204B. Spacewide, we have a full support from Star Dundee. Um, Spacewide has been, there has been a lot of work on Spacewide and a lot of demonstration from space, um, on Spacewide, especially from um, Star Dundee. You will see a very detailed demonstration um, shortly um, in the first break to showcase the Spacewide capability in RTG4 device. Space Fiber is another IP that has been gaining popularity, also coming from Star Dundee. Space Fiber um, has been shown, the last time I looked at it, um, Star Dundee were running Space Fiber at multi-lane for an operation at 2.5 gigabit per second. I'm sure you will hear from Steve later on on the latest update from, on Space Fiber that um, Star Dundee have in RTG4 device. And Speaking of microprocessor solutions, the Leon 3FT and Leon 4FT are well-known processor that have had a lot of flight heritage in the space customer base. Both of the processor solutions have been benchmarked and validated in RTG4 devices. You will be hearing on the latest benchmark data from Carpent um, shortly today to really showcase the capability and um, the performance that could be achieved by this microprocessor in the RTG4 devices. Serial Rapid I.O. is an IP that we have seen a lot of traction in the customer base and we've seen the attractiveness of Serial Rapid I.O. Micro Semi is actively evaluating um, supporting Serial Rapid I.O. for RTG4 and we hope to provide update to you shortly on the IP vendor and also on the performance benchmark on the RTG4 device. To summarize quickly the section on RTG4, we have qualified RTG4 to meet standard AA3 class B. We're on the right track to reach QML Q in several months and QML V in early of next year. And to continue showing our commitment to the space industry, to showing the growth of the family. We added the new ceramic quad flat pack 352 pins with first samples coming in July of this year and flight units to follow in July of next year. So just to change gear a little bit, we're getting close to the end of the presentation here. You have heard mostly update on the RTG4 family, as this is our latest and greatest radiation-tolerant um, uh, FPGAs. Where does RTG4 fit and where do the other RTFPGAs from MicroSemi fit in the whole system? That's why in this example of a remote sensing payload, we like to show that RTG4 is a perfect fit for um, where signal processing or compression that require a lot of signal processing capabilities, higher performance, more logic density, and also uh, fast serial interface where RTG4 is, per is the perfect fit for, for those places. When it comes to the blocks where you store data, where you transmit the data, store data before transmitting down to the earth or the transmission function or even in the payload interface unit, 
this is the place where we see that RTAX still have its sweet spots. And it has the right density, it has the right um, radiation performance and got a lot of heritage already. So these are critical functions. Um, you can say much more critical than where the signal processing is done. And where there are critical functions that are required, RTAX still have a very good place in there. The RTS access U um, have been seen to be used in places such as um, doing the management for the motor control as an example, um, when not too much logic density is required, you know, just a small um, logic elements are required in, in those places, RTS access U still have its place. So all together, RTG4 really complements the existing micro semi radiation tolerant FPGAs from this example. And to give you an update of where we are with our, we can call it legacy RT FPGAs as of now, we continue to collect um, heritage and also to see success in space of those family. We have all intention to carry on this family for years to come. We have good relationship with the foundry and there's no plan to discontinue any of the families such as RTSXSU or RTAX. An example of many programs that RTSXSU has been designed into, including very recent program that you may have heard of. The Iridium Next um, is a constellation of more than 81 satellites. Iridium Next was launched in January this year. And Iridium Next will be shown on the next few chart too as heritage for uh, the other ITFPGA family as well. So that way you could see even in this um, very high quantity constellation and uh, very recent mission, RTSXSU is still designed in. As mentioned, um, Iridium Next um, also have RT, uh, AX available on board. And to look into RT Proisic 3, so RT Proisic 3 is actually our previous flash generation. This is the 130 nanometer uh, flash generation um, FPGA. RT Proisic 3 continue to see more and more traction in uh, low Earth orbit applications and also sometime in mission in shorter missions, uh, mission with shorter lifetime. The RTG, the RT Project 3 also seen and have been flown in space in all of these missions, including the International Space Station, um, a couple of NASA missions such as LADI, um, IRIS, in the communication constellation, the Orcom Gen 2, and the most recently on the Iridium Next, RT Project 3 were on every single um, hosted payload on all of the 81 plus satellite on the Iridium Next program really sh showcase how the RT Project 3 still seeing traction and still seeing advantage um, of being reprogrammable um, in the orbit or the mission type that could tolerate the radiation performance of RT Project 3. So with that, I would like to um, conclude the RTFPGA update with a very quick update on the export control status. The RTFPGAs were removed from the U.S. munition list. None of our RTFPGAs um, are ITAR. Currently, all the micro semi RTFPGAs are under EAR control. And what being shown on here is the export control classification numbers for each of the family. The latest export control status would always be updated on our military airspace certification website that I've shown on the chart. To sum it up, you see the progress that we have made with all of our RTFPGAs, including the latest high-speed signal processing RTG4. It really shows our commitment and the leadership that we have in space overall. We're leveraging the product breadth that we have, the heritage that we have to really show our commitment in space. And the logo that you see on here, we're celebrating 60 years of Micro Semi having heritage in space, really showcase um, our commitment here, and the RTF PGAs were a big part of it. Thank you. Key context information I'll show on this slide for the RTF PGA products.